uh, Matt, hopefully. Hey, hey. Hey, Matt. So, I wanted to kind of have like an intro session or get your feedback regarding uh, jobs to be done and how we should propose them or script them or research for them. And uh, Matt was also interested in learning about that because he's uh, uh, going to help make the ones for compliance. So, I'm going to try and do the ones for access also. Um, so, yeah, just in terms of uh, like, I saw we have documentation on how to do it, but when Austin and I were looking at it, there's varied ways of doing that and that have been done on our website. And I was curious if you had like a, a simple start or a simple idea of where to begin with. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's see what you've got and then uh... Uh, or what is your proposal? And then let's discuss uh, the way we can approach that. So for myself, uh, all I have started with was the interviews to try and understand some of the problems around uh, compliance and access, um, specifically more focus on access, but obviously the, the methodology can apply for either stage. Um, and so just in understanding or looking at the, the link and the agenda, like it's a pretty rudimentary proposal. You know, you form your hypothesis, um, you conduct the interviews, uh, and then you analyze the data and create a job to be done. Um, my curiosity here is that I have already done the interviews or some interviews, so at least from my side, I'm doing more as I go along, um, but I still don't necessarily feel confident in the jobs to be done that I have thought about because they seem very vague. Mm -hmm. um, for me, for example, like in Access, uh, one that I want to propose would be, uh, I want to have granular control over uh, permissions and access across my organization um, so that I can maintain strict compliance and security protocols. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily seem like a good one or a, um, well-defined one. Um, Matt, how do you think or how do you feel about some ideas that you might have for your jobs to be done? Uh, so I, I guess if someone could just educate me, are jobs to be done typically very specific? Because generally speaking, what you said is correct. Um, but if we have to get more specific, then I can provide more specific detail around that. And that was my question too, is that it sounds correct, and that's what we've been discussing for you know two three months now. Is these sorts of concepts and specificity, but is that all that we need to write on the documentation for our stage website? Is there anything we can add or subtract to that, or how varied does it need to be? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so let me answer a couple of questions here. Uh, so first of all, I think it helps a lot that you that you did the these interviews. I, I would like to know more uh, what was the what was the purpose because you're saying they they weren't specifically uh, for jobs to be done uh, like what was the yeah what was the goal for for them but we can talk about this later um, another thing I wanted to say is that um, we don't have to worry that much uh, about the granularity or like how specific is the uh, is the job we're thinking about. I think the, the best approach for now is just to list everything that we, we think could be a job. And then uh, when we have everything on the paper or everything in a spreadsheet, just decide whether this is a job or this is a task or what's the, you know, what's the actual, um, well, what, what's the actual position of that item in the, in the hierarchy. So I think that um, this is a good example that, uh, that, that you provided. And I think this could be, uh, well, could could be one of the jobs they you know they do. Uh, we're talking about access, right, or or compliance. But I, I think we're like regardless of the of of the 
of, of the stage. I think this is uh, uh, this could be this could be a job, right? Uh, and then I just think like when we have all of them uh, on the paper, when we can decide, uh, well, yeah, is it a job or maybe this is a task? Can you tell me the difference between the two? Yeah, so um, task is is more uh, is more specific, right? So if uh, when you when you think about uh, um, a, a job, it's probably something more general that you're trying to approach, right? Like you you probably as a uh, like if if you are a, a compliance specialist or if you are uh, well, you're you're thinking like you have a handful of of jobs. And within these jobs, you have specific tasks that you, uh, you, you perform in order to, to support that job. Would a task be the same thing as like a job story? Or is a task more granular than that? I'm going to show you one thing because I, uh, I took a I screenshot. I think that's in the documentation. From, but. Yeah, I, I took a screenshot from Laurie's uh, presentation. And I think okay. this is this is just the best thing to illustrate that. Let me just let me just uh, look for it, and I uh, share here. Okay, uh, so just one thing, because I need to. Uh, I need to think how I'm going to share it with you because I'm doing that on another computer. Uh, let me just, just do. Um, so Daniel, can I send it to you and can you share it, please? Just yeah, no problem. Just from a different computer. And while you're pulling that up, um, Daniel, Matt, I have some of the stuff that I had thrown in the ticket, or not the ticket, the issue open on my computer. So after we look at that, I can share some stuff from the compliance side on the research and whatnot to help provide more context. Okay, thank you. So this is this is this is exactly what what you were asking, and I think this this explains it. I still, it can be quite vague because you, you can question, uh, you know, what, where is this exactly high level, when is this, this middle ground? But I think this illustrates if you can contain something like user stories and tasks uh, within, uh, within a bigger or high level job, this is, this is a, what, what job, uh, uh, what, what does a job mean? So as you can see here from this, from this illustration, you have a handful of jobs, and then within these jobs, you have multiple user stories and then tasks. So um, I'm not saying that we need to necessarily start thinking right now uh, about jobs. I think it's it's best to just document everything what we what we know so far, uh, our assumptions, and then try to figure it out how this can potentially work within this uh, with this, this framework. Yeah, that's really helpful. That that makes it a lot easier to digest. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. Yeah, and I think for me, um, I know Matt has done a ton of work and research and interviews already. So it sounds like he's already uh, ready to go. He's got a number of these already documented. Uh, I think for me, I want to try and pick up and start since I'm coming over to Access now and I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Sure. Which, uh, which screen am I sharing currently? Am I sharing my one with? I'm sharing two up? screens. It lo well, it looks like you have the two windows side by side. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Let's try this again. Yeah, I meant to have two windows side by side. Andre, let me know if it's too small and I can move it to my desktop if it is. Yeah, it's pretty small. If you can okay. do one, that yep. will be better. Not a problem. New share, that's not one. Okay. So I joined the team actually rather recently, just for your awareness. I joined in uh, in like mm, June eighth, I think was my start date. Um, so I've been just here. okay, <laughs> cool. There you go, same start date. So I've been just trying to learn everything, um, as I'm sure you have, just to get familiarized with everything. So way back in the day, uh, Matt went and conducted some user research with our user research group, 
Um, and it looked like mostly that you were tackling some of the assumptions and trying to validate or invalidate some of the hypotheses that you had about the compliance um, area, as well as like trying to establish some user needs. And so there were a number of like customers that were talked to, those insights were documented. And then from there, um, I believe a number of features were inspired for ways to kind of solve some of these initial uh, pain points that were identified um, around compliance. So one of those things would be like a compliance dashboard. Um, so there's a broader vision of how that will come into fruition. Um, and so what we've been trying to do is take some of these like use cases as an example and perhaps reformat them to better define those jobs to be done, those user stories or tasks, uh, maybe retroactively, like knowing what we know so far, how can we define that today? And so where I was coming from was, okay, using release the release management um, handbook page as an example, they've defined a handful of jobs to be done for their group, um, those job stories or user stories as they could be referred to as well, and trying to do that for compliance because we don't currently have that formatted anywhere today. Uh, and so I was curious to know your perspective on just like, how do we take some of those um, ideas that we had around like some of the use cases uh, and reformatting them to jump into like brainstorming jobs to be done. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, from my perspective, I think it's just a matter of uh, two things. <laughs> One, updating those uh, use cases because I haven't touched that epic since I don't know however many months ago Daniel and I put it together so there's likely yeah. out-of-date information there uh, and two then just pulling it out of my head because there's a lot of stuff <laughs> in my head that's not documented anywhere uh, which I know is super antithetical to get a lot of value so I want to make sure that we do get that out um, so we can do that sync or async I'm happy to do accommodate whichever style you prefer uh, and then Anjay sorry to interrupt you uh, no, that's fine. Um, so the good news, I, from what I see, the good news is that we have something, right? Well, we have we have some assumptions uh, mm -hmm. about about their jobs. So, uh, well, I mean, I don't really see another another way than just going through these assumptions and trying to fit them into the jobs to be done framework. Um, the way we can start uh, is if if you can share the, the document with me and uh, I, can, I can spend some time with it and then make uh, recommendations, I think that will be, uh, well, the most, uh, like the first, the first step. Then we can decide how we, uh, what, what we do next. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say too that the UX research issue you pulled up is probably the <laughs> only one I, I totally finished. Um, and probably the last one I opened or attempted to open because uh, prior to uh, Anjay joining, it was pretty difficult to get any of Catherine's time. She was just so overloaded with all the different groups she was supporting. Um, so Anjay, just for your edification, like I'm happy to follow that more formal process uh, or and or with Austin. Um, just let me know how I can best provide what I the foundation I need to 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 support you and, and those efforts. Sure. Okay, I'll let you know. I just need to spend some time with it, uh, learn because it's, you know, it's. I don't worry that much about the the jobs to be done framework because this is like pretty standard. I worry more mm -hmm. about like I don't have that much experience with the, um, you know, with with uh, with the actual with the actual job. So in order to understand it, I need to just spend a little bit more time. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's totally fine. Oh, and, and I know that um, there's probably a, cus a few customer calls coming up when I'm back from, uh, I'm out next week, but after that, I think I have at least one or two scheduled um, or getting scheduled. And I'm happy to have you included on those as well so you can listen in and uh, participate if uh, you need to. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I think uh, as, a, as a plan or for the next steps, I think the reviewing what we've, what we've got now um like making um well uh reviewing the the well what we've heard and then our assumptions and then uh moving to uh uh creating actual uh actual jobs i think this is this is how we we can go about it okay
So it sounds like... Just to, just to confirm one more thing. So uh, we're talking about, um, sorry, it's like be, there is a stage and there is group, right? Be below stage, there is a group. Okay, so we're talking about yeah. access group and compliance group, right? Yeah. We're talking yeah. about... I used to be in compliance both, and also both. taking over, right? So I'm moving to access now. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, I think good. we also recognize that there are probably uh, jobs to be done that need to be defined for our stage manage as well. Um, but I think we felt a good place to start was with our individual groups. Um, yeah. Okay. And then also okay, like to fine. add to that, with something like I mentioned, like my initial job statement is that there's a lot of overlap between access and compliance. So some of that mm -hmm. might kind of be filtering up towards the, the stage level. Okay, that's good. Um, so we talked about uh, jobs, we talked about, uh, well, job stories or whatever we want to call them. Uh, do we have um, any information or any assumption uh, in terms of actual user so do we uh, when you were defining uh, the job stories did we um, somehow describe the the job performer compliance so, what'd you say Daniel I was saying that uh, compliance has a few and I know there was a research issue to define a new persona. Uh, Matt mm -hmm. can elaborate. Yeah, we, uh, so I worked with Catherine to define the compliance persona, which is Cameron. Uh, that was, we sort of cut corners there because instead of spinning up a new research issue for it, we basically just took a lot of the learnings we had from the, I think it was the project compliance UX research issue. Because as we were talking to them, we inherently discovered who that persona was and, and what that was like. And the short of it is the compliance persona or like the actual compliance professional is typically removed from GitLab. They're not usually involved with GitLab. They're usually telling the other personas at GitLab, hey, you tag, you're it. You have to make sure that these policies are being followed. So the compliance manager is really kind of like an amalgamation of maybe like Sydney, the systems administrator, and I think Parker, the product manager, it just depends on who's the unlucky chosen tribute. Um, but sometimes Cameron, the actual compliance manager is involved. So that's that's sort of our, our take on it and, and what we attempted to quantify there. Okay. And how about uh, the access group persona? For is access, it's gonna be admins. Okay. Because it'd be mostly people who maintain organizational structures, uh, maintainer, owner, admin. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, and Matt, while um, well, Ajay's getting get caught up, uh, you and I could do essentially what was like in the handbook um, with uh, Daniel and we could just try one of those just like a brainstorming session around drawing down those tasks and then we could do another session with um, Catherine too maybe to help us uh, refine that all together yes that's a good idea we can do that I would just uh, suggest that if we do a brainstorming session we like it won't be like completely um, like from scratch uh, we we get a little bit prepared and maybe we uh, we take our thoughts uh, on on paper before this uh, b before this uh, brainstorming session. But yeah, this is a good idea. Yeah, um, I'm happy to to start a word document and brain dump everything that I have in my brain, <laughs> um, and I'll share that with uh, all of y'all so that y'all can async contribute before we schedule that. And then uh, out of curiosity, why Catherine, is it just to bring her in for historical context or what was the intent? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, it was just historical context. Okay, um, Okay. cool. And I assume, Andre, that's also for your benefit, right? To help yes. get ramped up, okay. Yes, yes, no, I think it's a good idea and Catherine will be perfect because she, she definitely has more knowledge than me 
so in uh, about about these groups. So yeah, it's a good sure. idea. We'll invite her. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm supportive of that. So I'll I'll start on that doc today. I think I should have time. If not, then tomorrow. But um, Austin, feel free if you'd like to just schedule some time later this week, uh, and I'll have the doc okay. out to y'all before that call. Okay. Yeah. I mean, feel free to throw it in that one um, doc that I had up earlier. I put it in the chat. You can okay. put brain dump in here if you want to. Yeah, let me do that. Okie doke. So that was it from my side. I don't know if y'all had any other um, input or questions. I'm good. I'll have a lot of questions. I'm not mm -hmm. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Well, cool. I guess we can go ahead and end the meeting early. It was uh, yeah. thanks for all this time, and uh, we'll follow up uh, when we uh, move forward. Yeah, thanks for scheduling, Daniel. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Good. See you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.